Dear Chairman, Please. ladies and gentlemen, um, my, uh, I have no disclosures. My travel is institutionally funded. And I would like to move your attention a bit from the pelvic areas um, above your shoulders to the uh, brain area. And um, the neuronal control of the lower neural tract is um, quite complex. It involves um, multi-level components of the central and peripheral nervous system. And in the early days, you uh, usually rely on bladder control just on the bulbospinal reflex. So um, the brain is not too much involved in decisions to empty your bladder. But during um, maturation and education um, in later life, uh, you learn to put the lower nerve tract under control of supraspinal areas that are um, nowadays quite well known what kind of components play a role in this network. However, in a specific subgroup of patients, in their later life, they seem to uh, lose this control again. So they have um, um, problems to control the bladder, so we call that in the, in the symptomatic terms OAB. And in some of those patients, we don't find any reason why they have that. So they are neurologically completely normal. You don't find any um, neurological disease or abnormality, and uh, the lonal tract is normal. So our hypothesis is that in those patients, maybe the supraspinal control or the connection between those areas involved in the control is somehow um, lost or impaired. And that's why we um, started to investigate um, OAB patients in the um, functional MRI to find out, is there already a problem in their resting state network connectivity? So do they have in their baseline um, brain activity already some signs of disturbance that might later on be an explanation for their symptoms? What is um, important in resting state? There are several components active in resting state, so, so your brain is always active. And you have um, those three important components, that is the default mode network and the central executive network, also called uh, frontal parietal um, a network, which are um, a kind of balance. So you can, your brain switch, can, can easily switch between the default mode network, which is really rest, as nothing happens, and uh, the um, central executive network, which is, makes you ready to act to an external stimulus or to an internal stimulus. So that you can take action, and the salience network is somehow modulating between both of them. So we um, recruited uh, 10 um, uh, non-neurogenic or idiopathic OAB patients, and we had a control group that was age-matched and handedness matched. At the end, all were right-handed. We investigated them in a 3T uh, Philips MRI scanner, and we had two conditions. One is with catheter and the other one is without catheter. The reason for that is that we wanted to investigate if the catheter that we usually place for later investigations and functional tasks for the bladder has already an influence on um, the brain activity. We performed an indie component analysis which showed nine neuronal resting state networks across all subjects. and. Um, we evaluated, of course, the group differences of the functional network connectivity and were able to uh, um, uh, calculate the temporal lags between the different components to be able to give a directed um, functional connectivity. So that is what we found in, in, um, in the whole group of all uh, subjects. We could nicely demonstrate the default network. Um, as uh, an example of, of the networks, we can uh, um, pick the picture in, in those subjects, and we didn't found a difference between the catheter situation and the without catheter situation. So that was the first important information for us. So the catheter itself doesn't change a lot. However, if we um, take a look in between groups, so NNOEB versus the healthy subjects, um, and we take a look at all the nine neuronal components that we could uh, um, investigate in resting state, we see a clear significant difference, uh, especially between uh, the, um, connect the directed connectivity between the um, uh, central executive uh, network, which is the frontal parietal attention network, towards the default network. And that might be a first hint, of course, it's not a proof, but it might be a first hint that we are searching in the right direction. Um, that 
in those subjects with NNOB, there might be um, a slight difference in network connectivity that can lead later on to uh, problems with the control of the uh, lower neural tract. And that's why we are um, very much interested to uh, further um, go in this research and um, also try to investigate the, um, the network connectivity in functional states with full bladder and urgency situations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any questions from audience? Please. Uh, Becky Clarkson from Pittsburgh, USA. Um, this is quite interesting. We've been looking at uh, resting state functional con connectivity as well. Um, I have a couple of questions. One is, did you just look at sort of every network or did you pick seed networks um, and see how things were connected in that way when you did the independent component analysis? Yes. Uh, we looked at every network. We excluded those networks that are uh, driven by, or that are non-neuronal networks, we call them, that are driven by like uh, heart rate things, uh, artifacts. <laughs> and so we stayed with nine uh, neuronal networks that we found. So that are all. Okay, and um, also, I, I don't know if I missed this, but what, what was the difference um, between the resting states with and without catheter in the individual groups? Was there no difference at all? No, no difference at all. All oh, right, that's really interesting. But there was a difference in every, all of those nine networks in between the... Yes, so what, what I showed lastly was mm -hmm. the with catheter situation. I, I mean, there was no difference between if they had no catheter or they had a catheter. Mm -hmm. So we focused on the with catheter situation because that will later on be the condition that we work with because we usually have the catheter in to do bladder filling tasks or whatever. So that's um, why we stayed um, with the with catheter situation. Okay, and did you have any circulation as to whether what the, so those differences related to, whether it was a worry or sensation yeah. or? Um, no, because at this moment they didn't have to worry anything because there was no, uh, uh, the bladder was empty, so they, they felt normal or whatever, comfortable in this situation if it's possible, but um, there was no certain task, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if worry is really a trigger for that. Okay, thank you. Is there a question? Um, thanks, Bill Gibson from the University of Alberta. That's a really interesting presentation, thanks. Um, there's evidence in children with primary nocturnal enuresis that they have impaired connectivity and development in the brain. Did your patients in your OAV group have PNE as children or not? Or do you not record that? Um, sorry, what did they have? So they, people with enuresis as children ah, okay. have yeah. impaired brain development. Okay, they? no. Um, we, we make an... Um, we made an um, um, history taking, but um, I can't remember if there was anybody that had uh, any resist in, in, the, in the past. No, not so far. Maybe one or two, but it was not a general pattern. Any other questions? Well, Ulrich, uh, I have a, a, probably a, 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 few, a question for the future more than from, for the present. <clears throat> Do you think that uh, this kind of uh, evaluation uh, could be able uh, in the future to select patients uh, who are more prone to respond uh, to a specific treatment, for instance, to neuromodulation in, 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 uh, in comparison to botulinum toxin or antimuscarinic agents. I mean, could we in the future, I mean, of course, it's uh, like to, to see in the future, but uh, in, in your opinion, is it possible that this kind of uh, uh, measurement in the brain activity could help us in selecting patients for the right treatments? Um, very good question. I really hope so, because only then this research makes at the end some sense. So if you can use it for something, but it's, I think, a bit too early to, to say that we can go clinically for that. We really hope, but there's still there's a, lot of, there's a lot of research uh, necessary to to really ver verify this and, and the studies necessary to, to see what happens before and after. And especially with neuromodulation, we need to look how we deal with safety in, in MRI. If you can, can go with the stimulator into the MRI, it's breaking up a little bit, so it's becoming more, more yes that you can do it, but still it's, it's not so clear. So resting state, you imagine resting state without uh, any intervention in the brother. So this, this 
circuit or connectivity circuit is uh, the more likely to involve in the suppression or inhibition of that uh, bladder control or storage function. Yeah. That's why your expectation probably is that because at the resting state, this activity is less. That's why people, when bladder distended, responses it cannot control the response of that uh, input from that yeah. bladder to induce those uh, urgency or type of any type of that, uh, those OAB symptoms like that. So this, you think that uh, this resting state changes is more likely to involve the kind of yes, inhibitory is. response or, or kind of modulating responses and uh, of that. That will be interesting to, to see if, if our hypothesis is, is stable enough to, to, to have this result, the same result or even the more impressive result with, okay. the, with, the, with the bladder filling in there because then we will see what really happens. So we now think it is um, the, those OAB um, subjects, they lack the ability to adequately re react or inhibit such um, um, incoming information from the bladder. And so it's, it's, yeah. they have the feeling, oh, it's so, so urgent, I need to go, yeah. because they, they lack this, this um, inhibitory um, uh, function of the um, parietal executive network. But we will, I'm, I'm looking forward to do, to evaluate More. how they look, how, how they behave during bladder when, filling. When we filling, so it's a connect, connectivity between, so, so this, this network is that are related to the uh, other networks which is known to be activated during the bladder filling. Is that, in, a, in the area you are showing this, and uh, changes the connectivity is in, involved in a storage phase, uh, increasing activity in the brain. Yeah, certain a, areas of the, of the networks we demonstrated mm -hmm. are involved also in the, uh, in in the, the, br in the bladder control bladder network control, okay, that has okay. been uh, demonstrated before. However, there are not yet too many um, uh, connectivity or functional connectivity studies yet okay. uh, published. So this is, we hope to, to open up a bit uh, this new area. Mm -hmm. You heard Becky Clarkson, she's already also working on this, so this might be something in, for the yeah. future, and okay. we hope to, to get new insights Great. into the mechanism in, in non-neurogenic and idiopathic OAB. Yeah. Great. Any other questions? Thank you.